Good morning, folks. We just got this brand new Okuma MB4000 horizontal machine. It's been absolutely amazing to get to learn it over the last two weeks. Uh, but one of the problems that happened the day it showed up, or rather the day we had started training, was uh, I realized we didn't have a post that worked. So I wanna show today the changes that we had to make to help you guys learn whether uh, you've got a brand new machine or you've got an old machine or a retrofit. Um, it's so rewarding to go figure out either how to fix a post or to just make quality of life improvements. Stick around for the end though, folks. We just learned one of the most useful, critical features uh, in Visual Studio Code. We'll cover that at the end. 10 years ago, or even I think to this day with lots of other CAM packages, uh, you don't get posts like you get in Fusion. So even if they're not totally perfect, it's hard to complain. Uh, and it's worth noting, if you go to the post library here in Fusion, you can check the Fusion 360 library. And there are so many to choose from. Uh, and this is relevant because as a guy who's not a post developer and not even really a programmer, I need these other examples to help dig through and troubleshoot with. So the first problem that really bit me was when I opened the default Okuma post, rotary table axis, I saw that there are three options, X, Y, and Z, and I thought, great, we should be fine. Now, this is very similar to our experience with the Haas machines, uh, knowing that the Haas posts are really well developed in Fusion. Under the Haas post, we've got the A, B, and C rotary axis. I saw the same thing from the Fusion team on the, the stock Okuma post, and I kind of thought, okay, good to go. Well, the problem was, no matter what I chose, X, Y, or Z, it was always posting out as an A axis rotation, and we need a B axis rotation. A good way to remember what can seem like the complicated axes and coordinate system stuff is, uh, we all know X, Y, Z for our X, Y, and Z of our three axis machine, X, Y, Z, A, B, C. So on a horizontal, the Y axis is what moves up and down, kind of toward the sky and then back toward the ground. So our rotary rotates around that Y axis, which makes it an A, B, uh, axis rotary. But again, I had no luck choosing Y here for the rotary axis table. So how do we fix that? Hop into my post. The fix here was under this create axis command. Now it's technically still calling this the A axis from a post variable standpoint, kind of behind the scenes, but the key was this coordinate colon one. That coordinate colon one is what sets it to effectively the second interval or a B axis instead of an A. Now, in full disclosure, I did not figure this out. I was trying to work on it while we had our training guy here. I called a friend, uh, he pointed me in the right direction. Thank you, CJ. But it's worth noting, I could have figured it out and I want you guys to have that confidence and skill sets. And here's how we could have figured it out. Frankly, pretty simply, we go back in to Fusion and we grab the stock Haas post and we edit it. I'm just gonna look for A axis. And sure enough, this section here, machine model none, and then A, B, C axis. So this all looks good. Has A axis, has B axis, has C axis. Once you start looking through the actual parameters, you'll see coordinate zero, coordinate one, and coordinate two. Next change. When we use the default fusion post, the first line of the posted code is this program name. And Okuma or OSP doesn't seem to like that. Luckily, this is a super easy fix. We open our stock post in Visual Studio Code and we expand our Explorer here and choose the CNC selector. Now you're not gonna have this unless you have this installed. So if you're new to post-processor development, I really recommend uh, watching our video here, editing G-Code and post processors is the easier way. We give you instructions and a walkthrough on how to download Visual Studio Code and, and most importantly, how to install some of the optional plugins or extensions that let you do what we're about to do. I'll choose milling, 2D, and doesn't really matter what program, just say a face program. That runs a sample facing program using the post processor that we have open. And what is absolutely amazing is I can double click on that line of code and it takes me to the section of the post that created that G code. And sure enough, right here, I see this right line program and we can delete it, or I'm not a big fan of deleting it. I'll show you in our post, I comment everything. You could very much call me a nervous Nelly when it comes to modifying my posts, but also I wanna track what I did. So here I commented it out with two forward slashes. It turns it green and then I made a comment. I removed this, I put the date in there. 
because Okuma doesn't like it and doesn't need it. Um, the other thing that's really helpful about adding these comments is um, Autodesk is going to continue to develop these post processors, which is a good thing. Uh, but unfortunately, these changes cause us to fork off. So I lose the benefit of all those Autodesk updates. So what I'll probably do is at some point decide to take a look at what has happened in the general post world. And there's probably gonna be some good changes, some of which may fix what I've already done. Uh, and adding my initials as a comment makes it super easy to go through and choose what I wanna cherry pick and bring back over. Third edit, when I chose flood and through tool coolant with the stock post, I was getting this error that flood and through tool coolant unsupported. So how do we fix that? Luckily, pretty easy. I searched for the term flood through tool, found it, and I saw all we had to do was add the M code number. So M50 is through tool and M8 is general flood coolant. That line of code gets rid of the post bug and correctly posts the M code when we call both coolants at the same time. I'm also a big fan of having the date at the very top of our post processor. And we already covered how to add date and timestamps to your post. And the other edit is manual G code. The stock fusion post for Akuma did not allow manual NC pass throughs, which we are a big fan of. This lets you add custom snippets of G code, M code, anything you want in the middle of your fusion program. Next change was we're trying to write this program for a chip fan where it's continuously rot rotating the B axis as it moves down to blow off our tombstones to get the coolant off of them. Now I know we could handwrite this, but I'm actually glad I did this because it discovered another bug, which is that as we're rotating the B axis, it starts at zero degrees and it moves all the way up to 360 degrees and then our Akuma was throwing us an alarm once we hit 361 degrees because it doesn't want 361 degrees. It wants one degree. It wants to wrap around once you hit that max of 360. And I'll tell you, this one was super rewarding to figure out. This is the stock post, by the way, not the one that I've corrected. I thought it was going to have something to do with the A-axis area. And sure enough, I saw this one has a range of zero to 360. The next one, this is the one that I modified in my post was silent. It didn't have that range of any amount. So the fixed example, this is the same section where I had to change the coordinate from zero to one to get it to work for the B axis. And I added this line range zero to 360 and it worked perfectly. Felt awesome to get that one fixed on our own. The next fix, and this was a huge fix. This could have been catastrophic is the post wasn't actually updating the B axis when we moved between work coordinate systems. So this again is critical because in this example, we were doing work on this face and then within the same program, we were going to move to a different B, I think it would be 60 degrees off and it wasn't actually pushing the B update in the code. So I did the same thing where I looked through some examples and the other stock posts, especially the Haas posts, they're just so well developed. They are a great resource and I found this section here called set work plane ABC. And this seems to force that update. Um, I also ran this by a friend, shout out to Lawrence, who said the other thing you can add to this is a force any. And then what I did was I had a right comment JWSB axis question mark. It's just kind of one of those, again, not so much nervous Nelly, but I want to see that the code that's being added there is the as a result of the modification that I made. And it'll eventually be something that we can get rid of. So if we spot a hole at B0 and then we switch over to a different B angle, when we post this, we can see it calls G15H50. G15H50 is just a coordinate system in the OSP or Akuma world, kind of like G54 or G55. And then for the next spot, it's at a different B location and we can see that code. And the comment helps tell me that it was our edit that made that uh, B axis move appear. Next up, at the beginning of every operation, we have a line that says call ot locks. So this machine has a tool matrix. So to set up a new tool, you have to walk all the way to the back of the machine, unlock a door, walk into this room that is this tool changer. Actually, you don't have to walk in, you can reach in. Uh, and you put the tool in, you store it, and then you go around to the front of the machine and you can call up the tool and touch it off in the machine. Or if you've got an offline presetter, you could punch in the value. But I wanted to make sure we never ran a tool that had no gauge length or no height value in the control. And frankly, I think all machines should have this because there's no practical scenario where you ever want to run a tool with no length and that will cause a crash. So what this does is calls ot locks, which is a subroutine. It basically says in Okuma variable programming, if the height is not equal to zero, then skip forward to NT lock, which is returned to the main program. And if it is zero, we throw this alarm. It's a, a condition alarm that stops the machine. 
such an easy way. Costs nothing to do this and it makes sure you never goof, at least by not putting in the height. Now, if you have the wrong height, this does not necessarily save you and there's a whole nother level of things you can do that are pretty cool where you try to match this to your fusion tool uh, gauge length, uh, but this is a cheap and easy solution I'd recommend everybody implement. As we're learning this machine, I've been jogging the tombstone up to the front of the machine and looking at the parts all the time as we're learning it and testing it. And so I wanted the spindle out of the way. Uh, G30 P1 sends the machine to the tool change position, which is perfect. So we added that code at the very end of our program, but there's two good takeaways to how we did this. The first is one of the most common beginner things when uh, I was learning the post, which is how do you push through a G30? You don't actually type G30. You need to say write block G format dot, dot format. Uh, and then 30, and then P1 is a pass-through variable for the Akuma. As usual, I'm adding my own comment in the post processor, and here we're passing through a comment to the actual G code as well, just so I saw it. Again, we'll probably delete that later. But how did I know where to put this? Again, it's so cool to make use of the explore here, or the extensions in this uh, G code sample program. We run a sample face, and at the very end, I'll choose something like the MO2 and that jumps me to command N, and I'll usually start scrolling up and look for something, and sure enough, function on close kind of makes sense. Uh, that's the great thing about posts. If they're not commented well, a lot of times the programming itself is relatively intuitive, and you start to see what it could do for retracting, turning off coolants, uh, resetting things, etc. and so at the very end, I added my own code, and the nice thing about the comment is it just helps confirm you're putting it in the right spot. At the beginning of the video, I mentioned that we learned something new about Visual Studio Code that frankly is an absolute game changer, and that's the ability to compare two files. I'll open up a post processor, and I also have a second post processor that I know was a modification of that first post processor, and I don't know what I change, and I wanna compare this Haas length check to this Haas length check copy file. In Visual Studio Code, expand your Explorer, Right-click on the first file and say select for compare, and right-click on the other file and say compare with selected. It will jump to, in this case, the only change that I made, which was adding line 756 with this comment. Reminder to show folks how to compare post processors with Visual Studio. But if you have a post that has many edits, over here on the right side of your toolbar, you'll have a red or green demarcation throughout the post to compare these changes. Wonderfully useful tool to compare two files and make sure you haven't missed any edits. And finally, if you're looking to learn more beyond the videos that we've got, go to cam.autodesk.com forward slash posts and click on this manual. It is a 200 page PDF manual that walks through more than you could ever wanna possibly know uh, on not only how to modify posts, but just overall what is the architecture and tips and tricks behind the methodology of writing and modifying your post. As always, folks, hope you enjoyed. Hope that helps. Check out our post resources and videos over on the NYC CNC website. Otherwise, take care. See you soon.